Women Rock Month. This is not just for the women, amen. But amen, I'm going to ask you to, man, give her your undivided attention on today. Um, I asked her for a bio. She said, look, we don't, we don't, we don't do that stuff. And, and I totally understand it, a woman after my own heart. Um, but what I do know is that I, I know that she is a woman of God, amen. Amen. And her spiritual parents is my spiritual parents, amen. And they don't make no mess, amen. amen. And so I'm grateful. I'm grateful that her and her husband have came today to just to be with us. Come on, let's give it up for the towels. Come on, let's give it up for our friends. Come on, come on, let's give it up for her and her husband. Her and her husband. You know, but I want you to give it more up for her, not so much of him, because she's saved. I think he's begin he might be saved. Because he, you know, he a Redskins fan. That's why we friend, because she recognized it. She, she, she recognized when I stepped right here. I stepped out of it. Because he's a good, good father. Amen. 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 We were speaking in tongues. All right. All right. So come on, let's give it up for our woman of God on today. One more time. You know, something told me that was Holy Spirit, and that's all I would say then. It was something. And I'm sitting on the bed, and he says, I'm playing Russian roulette, and I immediately just ball up. Because I, I ain't playing with that. I ball up and turn to the side, and bam, he shoot me. He shoot me right in my, the, the half a butt that I had. And he shoots me, and now I didn't look up. I didn't look up. I knew I was shot. So I kept looking. I, I, I just kept my eyes for apologizing. And then his mother come down and say, boy, what you done done? And so then I open my eyes and I look. I'm just looking. I don't feel anything. And then I look down and I see that I'm shot. So he shot me and the thing, it went here and came straight on out. Straight out. Didn't If anybody know anything about a 357, the exit supposed to be larger than the entrance. So I uh, went to the doctor. They came, you know, had ambulance came. She called the ambulance. I had to tell him to call the ambulance because he was running around like I shot him. I was like, get yourself together. You know, I had to tell him to call the ambulance. So then after I do that, I mean, after I go to the doctors, they tested me to see if I have been drinking or am I uh, having any drugs or anything inside me. And I told him, I said, no, I don't drink. I don't smoke. So they checking out my blood, and, and they kept asking me because they were saying that the exit is supposed to be larger. Are you sure he shot you from the back? And I was like, yes, he pressed it. I had to keep telling him that. And so they were amazed that the exit was smaller. And let me tell you something. Right then, I didn't know that God really watches over you like that. Now, I could have really literally died right there, but because he is such a good, good father and he has something for all of us, he has to protect his treasure. So when I, when I went to the doctors, you know, and they, they did all that, they fixed all that, they pulled it, you know, and checked and all that kind of stuff, the doctors, they were all amazed. Each doctor would tell the other doctor, she was on shot and the exit is smaller than the, the entry. And they are so amazed. And see, that's what you want. And I'm not saying you want to do things, you know, like that. Anything that God has his hands on will amaze you. It will amaze the people 
around you. I'm like, look, they should be something else. So they, they should be out of their mind. They should, you know, be losing it or they should be crazy or whatever. But when God has his hands on you, because you are great, because he's a good father, that means he's a good father who has made you great. It doesn't matter what the enemy will try to do. When you know who you are, he can't do anything. That's one reason why when it comes to uh, um, suicide, the enemy wants to kill our children. He wants to kill our children. Let me tell you why. Do you know what God has told that enemy? Don't put your hands on them. And what he will do is say, I will get them to do it since God said, I can't put my hands on them. So he'll talk to you and say, hey. Hey, I, I need you. You ain't nothing. You don't look like them girls. You don't act like those girls. They look like this. They look like that. But then, then it'll get in your mind and the enemy's like, yeah, because I'm not even going to have to touch them in a minute. I'm not. They're going to finish it off for me. Well, that's how great you are. I don't even know why I'm there. But that's how great you are. Don't worry about what. Look, let me tell you all something. This time in your life is temporary. This temporary. Your youth is temporary. It's not going to be there forever. So you need to know in your mind, I'm, this is just for a moment. God has got something great for me. You got to know it for yourself and believe that. Just like you get on that Snapchat and just like you get on uh, uh, Facebook and just like you don't get on Facebook and you don't get on Facebook. But, but just like the, the teenagers, they go on Snapchat, maybe Instagram. If, you, if you're studying that, Take a little minute and say, let me study the word for a minute. Let me get it. Because that devil, he hates you for real. He hates your youth. He hates the fact that God loves you. And when you realize that, when you realize, say, you know what? I got to find out why the devil hates me. When you find out why the enemy hates you, you will make your choices different. You will change your choices. Because when you know who you are, that enemy, he can't, he can't do anything. He's going to try to stop you, and that's all he can do, try to stop you. I don't even understand how I got there, but I'm telling you, the Spirit of God just said, he just told me, you talk about that. He just, he told me, talk about that. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you've done or what you think or even the, the little things that you've done. But let me tell you something. God has something great for you. He has something great for you. Come on, y'all. We're going to focus. This, this don't matter. He cries. And guess what? We do that too. We cry in the spirit and God picks us up. He sees our cry. He's attentive to our cry. And some of us have been crying by themselves. And God is saying, I am here to attend to your cry. I'm here. It's not just for you. This for, I mean, we got grown people thinking about taking themselves out. We got what we said because you know why? Because we don't realize the greatness that we have. We don't realize it. So, you know, just, just I don't know, just for a moment, God, I, let me tell you something. i never done anything like this. But I, I don't know why he, he had me to talk about that story and talk about youth and talk about suicide. It's because the enemy is trying to kill our children. He's trying to kill our children. And my daughter is 19. And she was thinking about suicide. Here we are. We got the word. The enemy is not prejudiced. He does not care who he comes after. He said, I want them all. Anybody who has the potential to be great, I want them. That's who I want. Anybody who has the, the ability that they can change a life, I want them. But God says, he got you. The enemy can only want you. But he has got you. He got you. All right? And you got to be, you got to be so focused on God. You got me. I don't care what it look like. You got to do that self-talk. We can do it now. We got these cell phones and these, these things we can put on our ears. And we can talk to ourselves. People might think we on the phone. You know, so they won't think you're crazy. God has set it up like that for us. Say, go on, talk to yourself, meditate, say that word while you're walking. Uh-huh, yeah, no, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Who shall I be afraid? 
when the wicked, even my enemy, come upon me to eat of my flesh, they going down. They going to fall. And we can walk around with these things in our ears. I'm trying to make it practical. So it won't sound so churchy. Oh, get on your knees and you got to get on your knees and just before the Lord. You got knees. You don't got to get on. You get in your heart on your knees. And say, Lord, I look, this is a rough day right here. But who you talking to? The Lord. He can do something about that day. This is a rough day right here, Lord. And when you talking to him, he'll show you some light. He will show you some light in that day. Amen. Real quick, I just want to pray. Father, we thank you right now for this moment. We thank you for who you are. You are a good, good father. That's who you are. And I'm loved by you. That is who I am. So we thank you right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Do something special for those who, who feel like that you are you are not with them. Do something special that they won't be able to deny that you are with me. And the world, they can even see. Get your hands off of her because God is with her. So, Father, we thank you right now. Comfort them. Bless them right now in the name of Jesus. Show them. I mean, surround them with your love, Father. Surround them and let them know and show them that they are a leader. We bless you right now. We thank you for what you're going to do. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. I I don't know what that was, y'all. I told you it was loaded in this place. I, my husband probably looked at me like, Ava, he ain't never seen me do that. It's like, like Karen said, it's five minutes and I'm out. That's it. I'm done. So, so we have this Save Girls Rock, and we're preparing ourselves for greatness. And all of us in here are great. If you're sitting in this place, every person in this place is great. So... I was looking to say, what, do, what does greatness mean? Now, you got a lot of definitions for greatness, and I haven't really found one from the world's view that describes what greatness is. So one of this is from the world's view. It says greatness, the property possessed by something or someone of outstanding importance or immense. That's, that's kind of good. It says you can possess greatness is by someone or by something or someone of outstanding importance or eminence. And so Jesus, Jesus asked when they had, they had this, uh, he was out with his boys and everything. They sitting around Paul and all, I mean, Peter and all them. So let's look at Mark 10, 35. Yeah. Let's start at 35. So they they all sitting around, and you know Jesus, he uh, he's the man. They saw the works that he's doing, and so they like, well, since he got the, the clout, I'm going to stick with him because if I stick with him, I can get somewhere. So let's start with that scripture, and it says, And James and John, the sons of Je- Zebedee, came unto him, saying, Master, we would that thou should have for us, I apologize. Master, we would that thou should have do for us whatsoever we shall desire. And he said unto them, what would ye that I should do for you? They said unto him, grant us that we may sit one on the right hand and the other on the left hand in thy glory. So before we go there, look, look at that. When he's saying, this is what the Lord said. I'm, okay, I got a desire. I can, grant, I can grant you your desire. And they said, can you go back to, yeah, there it is. Can, it say, and, and they said unto him, grant unto us that we may sit on the right hand and the other on the left hand. And the last part kind of caught me and say, in thy glory. So he's saying, I want to be great, but in your stuff. Now, that's what God wants us to do. But see, their motive was different. He, they say in thy glory. And what they don't know that God has a glory for them to have their own self. A lot of times people want to get great without their own work. They want to get, they want to get in his glory. 
instead of realizing that they had their own work and they can have their own glory per se that comes from God. So then let's go to the next scripture. Thank you. But Jesus said unto them, ye know not what ye ask. Can ye drink the cup that I drink of? And be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they said unto him, we can. <laughs> and Jesus said unto them, yeah, yeah, shall indeed, he's saying like, yeah, you're going to drink something. Yeah, shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of. And with the baptism that I am baptized with, shall ye be baptized. But to sit on my right hand and on my left hand. Hand is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared. So he said in his 40, it say, it's not even mine to give. You asking me to give you something that I can't give. And that's what we do sometimes. We see someone has something that we may want and we get connected to them. We supposed to get connected to them. That's what we supposed to do. We are supposed to do that. But then we think that their connection is going to make us great. We're looking for greatness to be connected with the wrong people. We're looking for them to give us our greatness when we have it. See, those connections with those people, we're supposed to do that because that is for submissive sake. We're supposed to learn from them. But God has put, has put in us our greatness that he has birthed us with. We all have been birthed with a greatness. So when we realize that, we won't have to ask anybody, hey, can I be this? Can I be that? And we're going around asking people, can we be this? When we're already something that God has already done. I'm telling you, when we realize there's nothing anybody can do about who we are. Only we can. But when we realize who we are and we realize we don't have to do that and we don't have to run after people to be certain things whatever but we can be with those people and they can see hey you're not only I'm not going to help you we're going to help each other because when you realize you know how great you are but then I, I'm y'all you know kind of stick your finger right there in that scripture but I'm gonna go forth and say but it shall be given to them no you, you can go back to yeah but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared don't forget that scripture right there okay go to 41 and when the 10 heard it they begin to be much displeased with James and John. Why are they upset with, Jesus, with them for asking a question? Now, people don't like to be wrong when they ask questions. It make them feel a certain kind of way. But when James and John asked that question, they were like, oh, okay, this is what I have to do. See, we shouldn't be afraid to ask questions on our way to greatness. We shouldn't be afraid to ask questions because we're going to get the right answer. We may have been on the wrong path for greatness. But when we ask questions, we get the right answer in God. But look who putting them on the right track. Jesus is putting them on the right track. Okay, 42. But Jesus called them to him and said unto them, Ye know that they which are accounted to be ruled to the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and their great ones exercise authority upon them. See, um, right here in Proverbs 23, 18, it says, when you, when you prepare, when, when you prepare, expect. When you prepare, expect. You can expect when you prepare. And Proverbs 23, 18 says, For surely there is an end, and thine expectation shall not be cut off. When you prepare, whatever you're preparing for, and you see the end in your mind, it says uh, your expectation is not going to be cut off. Whatever you're preparing for, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make that happen for you. But if you don't prepare then you're not going to be able to see that expectation. You're not going to be able to see that end. It says, for surely, surely there is an end, and thine expectation shall not be cut off. Then, do you know there's a, a, a cost for not preparing? 
There's a it's a it's an ugly cost for not preparing. You can look at Luke twelve. Yeah, Luke twelve, forty six. And then it said, the master, this was talking about the women were talking about uh ten virgins, they were prepared, supposed to be prepared, five were five were not. And then and, and look at this, what happens too. So after the when they said that the master was getting ready to come, they're gonna say to the five prepared virgins, give me some of your oil. They was trying to take their preparedness from them. We got a lot of people who we're doing, we've been doing what we're doing, and you sitting around, you watching them not do what they need to do, and then they come and they ask you when they watch you prepare, when they had the same amount of time to prepare that you had. And then they try to take your oil. They try to take your anointing. They try to take your, your uh, sweat and your tears. But those maids, which were very wise, said, uh-uh, no. And that's what we need to be saying sometimes to people. Uh-uh, no, I'm not going to do it. Go get your own. Go get your own relationship. Go spend your own time with the Lord. Go read the word for yourself. That's what we have to learn how to do. And then it, it says... And that's, that's what the story was. So then it says in 46, but, oh, wait a minute. It said, my master, this is what they thought in their heart. But if that servant says in the heart, my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat the male and female servants and eat and drink and be drunk, the master will say, that servant, the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and at an hour when he is not aware and will cut him in two and appoint him with his portion with the unbeliever. Mm. Jesus. And that servant who knew his master's will and did not prepare himself to do according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes. But he who did not know yet committed things deserving of stripes shall be beaten with few. So it's saying that when you prepare, when you don't prepare like we should, you're going to be beaten with stripes. And I don't mean that in the sense because a lot of times uh, people want to say that they're going to hell. or That's not what it's saying. You're going to feel your unpreparedness. You, you're going to feel it. It's going to be this regret that, oh, my gosh, I should have did that. And you missed that time. Because right here, the master, it doesn't mean that he it's just one time. This is multiple times that could be in your life that you, you should have been prepared for something. And we weren't prepared for it. And, then, and I'm still talking about greatness because this is, this is the start of how you start seeing your greatness. You have to prepare to see your greatness because God has something for us, but it's up to us to work and prepare so that we can see that greatness. And so when we, when we don't prepare, we're going to feel it. We're going to feel it, and, but the graciousness of God will be like, okay, I'm going to give you another chance. I'm going to give you another. If we haven't been preparing, come on, we're going we gonna to get this thing because he's a good father. That's who he is, and we love by him. That's who we are. That's what he's going to do. So and when you got when you prepare, and also you have to focus. You got to focus when you prepare. You got to have your mind and, and like they have the horses when they're in a race, they have these harnesses, you know, on their face so that when they're doing their race, they don't have to worry about the horses on the side because to view them, it will throw them off. You they run in this way, but if you turn your their head. It's going to mess up their focus, and then they could fall, run into another horse or whatever. And But they had to put that horse harness there. But God has given us the ability to focus. Focus on our promise. We got to focus on our, prom, our uh, preparedness, the target that we prepared for. We have to focus on it. And so when we focus on it, we have one thing in mind. And, and you can get focused over and over again. You can just change it. Okay, now I'm going to focus on this. I'm going that goal. I'm going to just stick to that one. All right, I did that one. I'm going to focus again. And it's a life. It's a life of preparation, a life of focus that God wants us to, to live. 
And once, once we live that, let me tell you something. Once we start living that, we will see. We will see what God had for us all along. Also, when you prepare, you work in grace. God gives us the grace when you prepare. When you, I read, I was reading one time. <clears throat> I was reading the Bible one time. So anyway, um, when you're looking in the Bible and you can go to the beginning of, it's after the Gospels. When they start their prayers and their letters, the beginning of their letters say, grace be with you. And at the end of their letters say, grace be with you. You go to the next chapter. It say, grace be with you. And then it say at the end of those chapters, and grace be unto you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I notice, I say, why is that in the beginning and the end of almost all of those books, not the gospels because God was still here and they was, he was leaving. And not that he, he is grace. But the Lord told me because everything, when people look at the Bible, they say, I can't do all that. When you read that, he said, I just gave you the grace to do what you just read. And then I sealed it with what you just read. That's what you do. When you look at it, let's, let's look at it. I want to show it to you. I don't want you to take my word for it. Because as y'all can see, I stumble over my reading. So y'all need to read for yourself. So <laughs> let's start. I'm just going to do... Um, I'll start with Colossians, Colossians 1. I, I just, but this, uh, if you look at the, the, the gospel, not the gospel, in the New Testament, so then it says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ who are at Colossae, grace to you and peace from our Lord Jesus Christ. He started it before he told you anything. Grace be unto you. I'm going to tell you some things you might not think you can do. Then he goes to the end of the chapter. And it says, oh, man, I love it. If I can get to the end of it. Okay. And then it says, and the fourth chapter, it says, this salutation by my own hands. Remember my chains. Then he said, grace be with you. Everything in here, when you start preparing yourself, God equips you with the grace that's already there. But preparing taps you into that grace. So everything that God has told you to do, we can't say we can't do it. Because he has given each and every last one of us the grace to get it done. He died for us. He died for each one of you. And so when he died, he gave you the grace to be able to do that. So then this is a, a quote that I find. It say, as you prepare adequately to achieve greatness, the divine ability of God will answer you in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. This is how we prepare for greatness. I'm finished with that. All right. Amen. Amen. Come on all over the building again. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Preparing ourselves for greatness, amen. How many of you are better prepared after that word on today that we are getting prepared for our greatness, amen? Amen, I'm just grateful uh, for that word. Come on, let's give it up for the woman of God that brought us the word on today. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.